Hi everyone. I am Dr. Karen Maskrinis and I am a second year radiology resident at Sri M P Shah Government Medical College, Jamnagar. And I am here to present my paper on anomalies of the fetal gastrointestinal tract. Introduction. Anomalies of the fetal cardiovascular system are most prevalent, followed by the central nervous system. In the gastrointestinal system, the most prevalent are the errors of rotation. Presented here are few GI anomalies and their appearance on antenatal ultrasonography. My aims and objectives are to evaluate the utility of prenatal ultrasonography for fetal gastrointestinal abnormalities and to find out their characteristics. Materials and methods. Samsung RS80 EVO ultrasound machine was used. Methodology. Pregnant females referred to us by obstetrics and gynecology department underwent routine antenatal ultrasonography. Four patients with different fetal gastrointestinal tract pathologies <clears throat> were diagnosed and findings conveyed to the respective obstetrics and gynecology department. My results are as follows. The first case is of imperforate anus in which the ultrasonography findings are dilatation of bowel loops and anhydromnios. Second, duodenal atresia, in which we found double bubble sign as a result of an enlarged stomach and duodenal cap. Third, fetal gallstones, in which multiple ecogenic foci within the gallbladder were found. And umphalocy, a herniation of bowel loops and liver into a membrane-covered defect was found. Discussion, first case, a 30-year-old G2P1A0L1, whose estimated gestational age was 17 weeks and one day, came for routine ultrasonography and her findings were dilatation of bowel loops, 7 mm in maximum transverse diameter and anhydramnios. Here are the images showing the dilated bowel loops and in relation with the urinary bladder. On gross examination of the terminated fetus, anal opening was found to be closed and right lower limb was found to be deformed as shown below. Imperforate anus. Common congenital malformation that is caused by hindgut development defects or retardation. In association with bacterial abnormalities, standing for vertebral anomalies, anal atresia, cardiac anomalies, tracheoesophageal fistula with esophageal atresia, renal anomalies, and limb anomalies. Indirect findings are dilated bowel segments and calcified intraluminal meconium in second and third trimester. And some direct findings are no perianal muscular complex and no target sign signified by a hypoechoic anal sphincter and an echogenic anal mucosa. It is shown in the image below. My second case, a 30-year-old G2P1A0L1 whose estimated gestational age was 20 weeks, 6 days and came for routine antenatal ultrasonography and findings were Dilated stomach and duodenum, giving the double purple sign, and the lyca, which was in the upper limit of normal, single deep, deepest pocket being 7.1 cm in diameter. And the images shown are of a transverse section of abdomen and a coronal section showing the dilated stomach and duodenum and giving the double purple sign. Duodenal atresia is the failure of recanalization of the bowel lumen, that is the duodenum, in fetal life. The double bubble sign is a result of an enlarged stomach and duodenal cap and is generally found more than 24 weeks of gestation in association with polyhydramnios, which is also found in more than 24 weeks gestation in 50% of cases. Differential diagnoses are cholidocal cyst, which is seen closer to the liver, and in continuity with gallbladder or hepatic ducts. Omental cyst, typically seen closer to the anterior abdominal wall, and enteric duplication cyst, which will be seen separate from the bladder and stomach. My third case, a 24-year-old G1P1A0L0, whose estimated gestational age was 36 weeks, 5 days, and came for routine antenatal ultrasonography, and the findings on sonography were multiple ecogenic foci within the gallbladder. The image shown below shows the ecogenic foci, a cluster of tiny juxtahepatic ecogenic foci. So fetal gallstones are seen as a cluster of ecogenic juxtahepatic foci. Shadowing as well as comet tail artifacts may also be seen. Gallbladder sludge 
Gallbladder may be diffusely echogenic in gallbladder sludge. It is difficult to distinguish true sludge from multiple small stones. Associations, hemolytic conditions of the newborn and maternal hemolytic anemia. Differential diagnoses are juxtahepatic calcification from meconium peritonitis, in utero fetal infections, and in utero calcified hemangioma of the liver close to the periphery towards the gallbladder. My fourth case, a 26-year-old G1P1A0L0, whose estimated gestational age was 20 weeks one day, came for routine antenatal ultrasonography, and on uh, sonography, the findings were a midline anterior abdominal wall defect with herniating large membrane-covered sac containing bowel loops and liver. And the images are of a sagittal section of abdomen showing the anterior abdominal wall defect with herniation of bowel loops and liver. And you can see the umbilical cord attached to the sac. Umphalocele, seal, it is a congenital midline abdominal wall defect at the base of the umbilical cord insertion with herniation of gut or occasional other structures out of the fetal abdomen. It has a high association with anomalies. Multiple bowel loops and on occasion liver herniate into the membrane covered defect. It is not free flowing and are usually seen as hyperechogenic content, which is non fluid filled bowel. The umbilical cord insertion is directly into the omphalocele. Its differential diagnosis is gastroschisis and they, it can be differentiated by its site, which is umbilical in omphalocele and para umbilical in gastroschisis. The sac is always present in omphalocele and absent in gastroschisis. And associated anomalies are common in omphalocele while rare in gastrocytes. And the images are uh, attached below, differentiating omphalocele with gastrocytes. In conclusion, fetal gastrointestinal tract abnormalities are relatively uncommon and a high degree of suspicion is required for their diagnosis. Thank you.